Today, I'm going to show you how to stitch together a panorama in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com, where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today's episode is all about panoramas. We're gonna give you some great tips, so when you actually go out and photograph your panoramas, you're gonna come back with a lot better source images. Then we're gonna show you guys how to actually bring everything into Photoshop and how to stitch the panorama together. I'm gonna to show you guys how to remove some distortion that comes along with panoramas. And then we're gonna show you guys how to improve those panorama shots to make them picture perfect. Awesome episode, you don't wanna miss it. Our expert tips for today come from David J. Crew, expert panorama photographer. And his first tip is use a sturdy tripod when you're photographing a panorama. Also, when you tilt your head on the actual tripod, make sure you're staying level. You don't wanna go up and down too much. It's gonna really show in the photos. The next tip is to overshoot a little bit. Take a couple more images than you need. We're using digital cameras these days and a couple more frames is not that big of a deal. You'll wanna make sure when you get back on your computer that you have as much information as possible. And shoot a little bit wider than you need so you can get a lot more information in your shots. Now, as far as your lens choice goes, you really don't wanna go with something that's super wide angle. Choose something that's 50 millimeters or higher. This is gonna eliminate distortion and make it a lot easier to actually bring these pictures together in Photoshop. The next tip has to do with clarity. In order to make sure that your images are super sharp, you're gonna to wanna to change your aperture away from anything like 2.0 or 2.8. You wanna make sure you're shooting between f8 and f11. That's gonna make sure the images are as sharp as possible. Next, be sure to change your lens to manual focus. That's gonna make sure your camera keeps the exact same focal point for the entire panorama, and it's all gonna look perfect when you merge it back together again. And the last tip is to use a slow shutter speed or a neutral density filter. This will allow anything that's actually moving around during the frame to get blurry in the final and most of the time you won't even see that it was there. It's gonna help clean your image up quite a bit even before you get into Photoshop. So you've gone out and taken some amazing panorama images. You've got the full sweep, maybe a skyline, maybe a landscape, and now it's time to bring it back into Photoshop. So here in Photoshop, we're gonna go to File. I'm gonna go down to Automate and then we're gonna go down to Photo Merge. Okay, you're gonna get the photo merge dialog here and there are a lot of options here, but I really recommend keeping things on auto. We've done extensive tests with all these options and auto tends to work the best most of the time. So we're gonna hit auto here. We're gonna say use files and now we actually have to go find those files. So we're gonna hit browse and basically I'm just gonna go to our image here. We've got four raw images. These are actually taken in Hawaii uh, by David J. Crew. We're gonna select those and hit open. There we go, we've got our dialog here. We're all good together. We're gonna keep blend images together checked and we do not wanna check vignette removal and ge geometric distortion correction. We're gonna work with those things after the fact if we need to. All right, so everything looks good. We're gonna go ahead and hit okay right now and it's gonna take just a second to process this together. All right, so the processing is done and this is what I get from Photoshop. This is basically my output panorama, which is very, very cool. Photoshop does the majority of the work for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn some of these layers off and on just to see like how they actually get stitched together. You can see it takes care of your layer masks and placing the images for you, which is very, very convenient. All right, now we do have a couple of areas here on the corners that actually don't get information. And this is just the way that, you know, when you're actually like moving your camera around, it's going to take some more information in the center than it will on the sides. So we are gonna end up with areas around the corners that actually don't have information. So the first thing we're gonna do is correct for that. So what I'd like to do, we're gonna take all these layers and I'm just gonna merge them all together again. So we're gonna click on all of them and I'm gonna hit Control or Command E, which is gonna merge them all together. Now we've got one layer and it's basically our entire panorama. Okay, now let's get rid of some of the distortion. We're gonna go up to Filter and I'm gonna go down to where it says Lens Correction. So Filter and Lens Correction. Okay, now here in our lens correction, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on our custom. There we go. We're gonna click on the custom dialog and you can see everything should be right about at zero, except for our midpoints at 50. Now, in this case, you can do a lot of changes to your image. So it's really up to you as far as how much correction you actually wanna make. What we're gonna be doing is changing our distortion. So if I bring our distortion slider this way, we can see it's making the problem a little bit worse. That doesn't look any better. So let's bring it to the right a little bit and see how that looks. 
And we can see what it starts to do is kind of flatten out our image a little bit. There we go. So there's where we started out. You can see it's got a, a bit of a bow, and I'm going to bring it to the right a little bit, and it's going to just flatten everything out quite a bit more. All right, there we go. That looks pretty good. Now, if we do need to change any vertical perspective, we can change that just like this. OK, and horizontal perspective, we can change just like this as well. Most of the time, you're not going to need to do either of those. But in this case, I think a little bit of vert vertical perspective looks great. All right, we're going to hit OK. And let's look at the before and the after. So here's the before and the after. You can see it just kind of fills in the sides of the image. Perfect. Now, we have a lot of information on the bottom of the image that really just needs to be filled in or cropped out. So the first thing we're going to do is crop our image. So we're going to hit C for the crop tool. Now, most panoramas are going to be in a 3 by 1 ratio as far as your crop is concerned. So I'm going to hit C for the crop tool. And now we're going to type in 3 up here and 1 up here. And that's going to load us the uh, standard crop ratio for a panorama. And you can see in this case, it actually brings the top, it basically cuts some of the top off and cuts some of the bottom off as well. Let's just go ahead and bring this down just like this. I want to show you guys what we can do to fill in some of these areas if we need to. All right, there we go. So that's a good crop. Now, these are your panoramas. You can do whatever you want with them. You don't have to choose this crop. This is just a standard one that's going to look good most of the time. OK, so we've entered three and one, and we're going to hit that check mark right up at the top. And here we have our output panorama, which looks great. Now, the only problems I can see, and you, the wonderful thing about taking a panorama image, by the way, let's just zoom in, is you can see all this detail. It's just amazing how much detail is captured because we have so many different frames. Now, it looks like we have a little bit of dust on our sensor as well. So let's go ahead and take care of that dust. Just a couple little black dots. Now, the easiest way to do this is going to go right over here to our spot healing brush tool. I'm just going to paint right over top of these dots. There we go. And Photoshop is going to automatically locate areas that are similar to wherever I paint, and it's going to automatically fill those areas in. There we go. And there may be a couple more dots here on the right side. I can't see any, so we're good to go. Now let's talk about what we need to do in this area, basically, to fill this in. We've got a couple of different options. You can use something like a patch tool or a clone stamp tool. In this case, in this case I'm actually going to use a content-aware fill. So here on our layer, what we're going to do is use our lasso tool. So let's go ahead and select our polygonal lasso. OK, and now I'm just going to make a selection right around here, including that bottom area, and hit Enter. Now we're going to bring in a content aware fill, which is very, very cool. OK, let's hit Edit, and then down to Fill. Now here in a normal fill dialog, we've used this many times on Flurn. You can say use black, or 50%, or gray, or white, or whatever you want it. We're going to go all the way up here to where it says Content Aware. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to figure out everything else that's in the image, and it's going to try to find areas that are similar to actually what we selected, and it's just going to fill in the gaps for us. It doesn't work perfectly every time, but you'd be surprised at how often it really does a great job. All right, let's hit OK, and there we go. It's going to process, and there you can see it filled it in with some information. Now, I don't really love that, so let's just hit Undo, Command or Control Z, all right, let's deselect, and now we're going to make a different selection right over here and see what it does. But it is pretty amazing that it does most of it for you. All right, so we'll go Content Aware, hit OK, and there we go, deselect, and we've got something else too. So if this works for your image, awesome. If not, what you can do is something like a Clone Stamp tool. So you can hit S for the Clone Stamp tool. We're going to make, in this case, I'm going to make a new layer if I am going to use the Clone Stamp tool. And I'm going to sample from the top and simply go down right to the bottom there. And then we're going to basically do this manually. All right. So it'll be a manual duplication. And make sure to sample from some different areas when you do this, by the way. It's going to make sure that your image doesn't look so, um, it's going to make it look like you don't have something that just repeats over and over and over again. So I'm sampling from different areas as I go through. And it's going to really help it make it look a lot more natural. All right, now I'm doing a very quick job with this. Um, if this was a, uh, a final print that you wanted to actually get print out and you know, frame for your house, which I think that panoramas are really great for printing and things like that, um, I would recommend spending a little bit more time. Obviously, this is, um, <laughs> this is what I would consider a very, very fast job. But the option is there for you to clone stamp if you need to. And most people don't look at the bottom of your <laughs> bottom corners of your image. All right, let's go over to the right side and see what this looks like. You know, in this case, 
a clone stamp is going to be super easy. We can just clone stamp these areas right in and we're good to go. All right, there we go. Let's just make sure we put a little bit, I, when I cropped earlier, there was a little bit too much space on the right side. So we're just going to bring that down. All right, and we're going to merge these back together again. So here we have our panorama and it, it really just does look great. Here we are viewed at 100%. Well, this is, this is 100% now. I'm going to go ahead and get the Photoshop tabs away so we can just see all the detail that we're able to ca capture. Now, a huge benefit with the panorama is that you can capture more than just, you know, let's say your camera is, you know, 15 or 20 megapixels. By taking many different images and bringing them together, you can wind up with a final image that's a lot larger and has a lot more detail than your original. All right, so last things I would do with the panorama, here we go. We're gonna go down to our adjustment layers and I'm gonna go all the way down to where it says selective color. Now, this is a really great option whenever you're working with any kind of landscape image. Uh, selective color is going to allow you to basically choose whatever color you want and adjust it in, in your image. So we're gonna start off with our reds because we do have some reds here. Now with my reds, I can choose to have more or less cyan and look at that really nice difference that it makes in my image. I, I recommend using selective color because it'll keep your color tones looking really natural. All right, we can change how much yellow is in there. We can go all the way yellow or a little bit more towards uh, blue and then we can change the magenta as well. We can even change the black levels to lighten it up or darken it as well. All right, next we're gonna go into our yellows and a lot of this image has yellows into it. So we're gonna play with our cyans, here we go. Bring, really bringing out this red. There we go. And choosing how much yellow we'd like to put. And in this case, I think more yellow looks good. All right, then we're gonna go into our cyans and our blues and that's going to dictate a lot of, you can see what's going on here in the sky. So we're just taking the colors that naturally exist and we're enhancing them just a little bit. So here's our blue. Let's lower down the amount of yellow in our blue, which is gonna really cool the image up quite a bit. There we go. And you know what, to finish it off, I'm gonna go over here to our whites. There we go, because we do have some whites in the clouds and we can pull this either more yellow, give it like the kind of like sunset type look if you want some yellow magenta, or you can, <laughs> you can just do something incredibly funky that doesn't look good. You can do that too if you want. We're gonna bring the yellows down to really give the sky a, a very nice blue tone. There we go, that looks great. So let's go ahead and close that down. We can see the before and the after here. All right, turning this off and on, we can see we, we haven't done a crazy job making the landscape look unnatural, but we've done a great job actually like bringing out the colors that actually exist in the landscape. All right, and the last thing I wanna do is sharpen it up a little bit. So we're gonna go to window and down to actions. I'm actually gonna use the Flurn method actions for sharpening. So I'm gonna click on sharpen plus three, and we're just gonna click on this a couple of times, and this is gonna really help to sharpen our image up. And the Flurn method of actions, <laughs> the Flurn method actions are available on flurn.com as well. All right, let's go ahead and close this down and uh, let's go ahead and group these together. We'll take a look at the before and the after and our final panorama. Here's our final panorama before any of the adjustments and here it is with a color correction as well as sharpening. It looks amazing. Thanks so much for watching today's episode, guys. We've put together a wonderful gear article on flurn.com. You can see what the professionals are using to capture amazing panoramas, as well as some budget options for you guys who aren't looking to spend a ton of money, but you wanna capture amazing panoramas. I said that twice. That's good. <laughs> Thanks, guys. If you have any questions about today's episode, please leave it in a comment right down below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you love what we're doing here on Flurn and you'd like to learn more Photoshop and photography, just subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's very simple. Just click on your screen right now and you receive free Photoshop and photography episodes every single week. Thanks again, guys, and I'll Flurn you later. Bye, everyone. It's to when you're going out, that are going to really help out to help you actually photograph, take your panoramic images to and see what kind of gear the a wonderful gear article on flurn.com check it out that way you can see what the professionals are actually using to get these amazing to capture amazing all right Woo! makes me want to go to hawaii i feel like i'm there this incredibly large scale beautiful image makes me feel like i'm in hawaii